Welcome to Business Unveiled Podcast. This is the place where we help overwhelmed, time-starved entrepreneurs like you make the profitable shifts to get more done and get more out of life. I'm your host, Angela Prophet, award-winning eight-figure entrepreneur and CEO. And in every episode of Business Unveiled, I'm bringing you conversations that will give you the expertise and strategies that will scale your team and business so you can get shit done. That's GSD in our world. So get your time back and grow a business that helps you be present in your life. Let's do this, y'all. Blutus turned digital marketer. Our guest today is the founder and president of NR Media. After working with multi-million dollar businesses and gained over a decade of corporate experience in the field, her mission now is to empower other creatives and freelancers with the business and digital marketing know-how they need. And you need it, trust me, in order to create a career doing what they love. So many of us start our careers because we have a passion or we have a hobby and then it becomes work and then it's not fun anymore. And so how to really strategically think about what do you want out of your business? What do you want out of your life? Yes, we all want to help people. It's usually why we start a business, but what do you really want? What does that strategy look like? We're going to share a little bit of memory. Let's take a trip down memory lane today. And I feel like uh, our guest today is like my long lost, uh, twin. We are so similar. It, it, it was just, it's, it's so awesome. Like looking at the brand and I'm just going to open up and bring her on by saying, um, her top CTA button on our website says it's fucking showtime. So people it's fucking showtime. Nicole Ricardo, welcome to the show. Yay. Thank you so much for having me. So excited to chat. Of course. I'm so excited. So you've been at this for well over a decade, but before we even jump into like the really goods of businesses, you started out like, and you're creative too, but you played the flute. Was that right? (laughs) Yes, I actually, um, yeah, I am a classically trained flutist, professional flutist. Uh, I do still perform professionally with some orchestras. Um, and that's what my degrees are in actually. Yeah. So all music. So like, where did you get this wild, crazy hair of like, I'm going to just start a marketing company because there's always a story, right? So it's like something (laughs) had to have happened to you. Like what happened? (laughs) Oh, oh yeah. So of course there's a story. So, (laughs) so what happened was, (laughs) Um, yeah, I, I went to school, got my, my bachelor's and master's in flute performance. And after I graduated, I'm sure anybody who is in any sort of creative field will be able to relate to this, but, um, it's really freaking competitive to get a job in the industry, let alone a full-time job, let alone a full-time job that's actually going to pay you a livable wage. And these are things that, you know, they just don't really tell you in school, right? Um, But to put this in perspective, like literally the year I graduated, there were five full-time jobs that came available for flute in the entire U.S. that year, the whole year, and all of them paid under $30,000 a year. So um, yeah, that's the kind of thing that we're working with. And usually auditions, you know, it'll be like, like 150, 200 people. Like it's insane, just so insane competitive. So anyway, um, after I graduated, you know, I was doing the whole like freelance starving artist thing for a while. I was piecemealing together, uh, you know, subbing with a bunch of different orchestras. I was teaching private lessons to people in their homes. I was teaching at a music academy. Um, so between all of the things I was doing, it was, I I mean, I was working like full-time hours. However, (laughs) I was not getting paid enough to even remotely be able to pay my bills, even combining all of those things, um, which that's a whole other story on, you know, the shitty pay and creative industries. But anyway, so, uh, yeah, I ended up having to go get a normal nine to five job and, the job that I got, it, so it was in the medical industry, moved to Austin, was still in the medical industry, but the practice I was working at, they 
would have these regular meetings on like, hey, how can we improve what we're doing on blah, 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 right? So we had this meeting and it was on how can we expand our um, demographic to, you know, or our audience to a more millennial demographic and da, 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 da. And I just like freaking dominated the meeting. Um, I had like statistics. I had my laptop pulled up. I had notes. And so afterwards the owner kind of pulled me aside. and was like, um, okay, so you're clearly really good at this. Do you want to start helping with the marketing for the practice? I'm like, um, yes. So little like backstory here now, <laughs> all through school, I, in a roundabout capacity had kind of been doing marketing. I just didn't actually realize that that's what I was doing. So when I was at Florida State, um, that's where I did my degrees at. I worked in the office of admissions. Sometimes I would help out with their social team, right? Social media, obviously that's marketing. Um, when I was totally. in grad school, <laughs> when I was in grad school, I was running a woodwind quintet and I would put together all of our concerts. I put together a tour. I was doing grant writing. We did fundraising events, donors, you know, doing the social media stuff, like uh, promoting our events. Obviously all of that is marketing, right? And I always really loved that aspect of it, but I just didn't actually realized that's what I was doing until, you know, fast forward that meeting at that practice where he's like, Hey, you want to start helping with Marty? I'm like, Oh, that that's, that's what this is. Okay, cool. Yeah. I like this. Let's do this, do more of this. So, um, yeah, started doing that, worked at a, a few other places and, um, eventually just kind of got to a point where I'm like, you know, well, I'm seeing all of these results. Like, obviously what I'm doing is working, but also like, I mean, it's, it's a nine to five, right? Like as a creative person, you can only not be doing creative things for so long until you're just like, what the fuck am I even doing? Right. Um, exactly. so it, it just kind of got to a point where I'm like, you know, why am I like doing all of this and seeing result, result, result. And I'm just putting more money in somebody else's pocket who, you know, is, somehow telling me oh you can only take these this many days off per year you're only worth making this many dollars per year you know I'm like that's so stupid to me like why that doesn't make sense in my brain so I was like this is like whatever I'm I'm over and I'm out so um in August or not August in January of 2018 that's when I really made the decision like I fuck this shit I'm out you know uh I'm gonna start doing yep. this myself and stuff just be honest yeah let's be honest I love it um, have the fuck this shit moment right um <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was when I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do this for myself. So I completely, you know, I, I did my, my branding, built my website using SEO, started getting strategic with my own social media, um, educating, growing a, an audience, building relationships with people. And then I started, I just started pitching myself for the opportunities that I wanted for booking, um, paid opportunities. And at first I did actually use it to book music things. Um, although I did book a couple social media management, uh, clients, social media marketing, cause that's always really been kind of like my, my wheelhouse. I mean, obviously our generation, we're all on like Instagram. Right. So of course, right. That's right. Um, but yeah, it was primarily originally to be doing music related things, but, um, by August of 2018, that was when I was able to quit and end up going full time with working for myself. But when I did, I was getting so many questions, like literally like multiple questions a week, people DMing me, messaging me, emailing me, like, how did you do this? Because anybody in a creative field, we know, like, once you get into that nine to five world, it's really freaking hard to get out because yep. like, it, yeah, it, like it's so draining, right? And so your life is pretty much go to work, come home, eat, sleep, wake up, repeat, you know, it's really hard to get out of that, especially if you're wanting to be self-employed. But anyway, so I was getting a ton of questions and um, I was like, well, okay, well, I guess I'll just like teach you what I did. And so I ran my first online course. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing at that point. This was like before online courses were I, a thing not really a thing like they were a thing but I yeah. haven't seen anybody doing this yet you yeah. know like now where everybody freaking has one but anyway yeah. um so yeah I launched my first course with literally one Instagram post <laughs> like hey here I'll show you what I did um and got <laughs> I, I think I had like 
15 or 20 people in the very first round and going wow. through that and teaching everybody what I did. Um, and then seeing people be able to like, literally like somebody was able to quit their job. Somebody was able to graduate from grad school. And instead of getting a job, they had a business. They graduated with a business. I was like, Oh, th- this, this, this is what I'm, sp- <laughs> this is what I'm supposed yeah. to be doing. Okay, cool. Yeah. Did you read like any books or like listen to podcasts or have a mentor or was your boss in healthcare? Like, where did you find the information to have that mindset of knowing you're creative? You, you're not going to be the same company for 30 years and be happy. Um, or did you grow up like in an entrepreneurial household where you like kind of knew some of these things? Cause everything that you just said, like, obviously I know it now, but when I was like 20 something years old, I've worked in healthcare too. I didn't know what I didn't know. And so I joined a business group and that's when they started saying some of these things. And I'm like, Oh, never thought of it that way. Cause I didn't grow up in a household with a mother and a father, you know, that was entrepreneurial. So what was your like inspiration to like learn how to think like that? Oh yeah. There's, I think there's a few layers <laughs> to yeah. that. Um, so yeah, well, the first thing you asked was, uh, you know, podcast books, whatever. And yeah, as soon as we had that meeting and he pulled me aside and like, Hey, you want to start helping with this? Um, and I kind of finally figured out like, Oh, this is actually what I'm doing. This is what this is. This is, you know, I'm really enjoying this. I I'm very so okay first of all I'm ADHD so hyperfixation is Me a too. Real thing. Oh yeah, we went way 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 down the hyperfixation rabbit hole. So I was literally like any books I could get my hands on I was reading them. I was listening to a million freaking podcasts. Like I honestly I probably listened to like 2 3 hours of podcasts a day, like watching YouTube videos just like literally like if I wasn't working, I was learning. I really just threw myself in. Um so there's definitely that. <laughs> there was a lot of self-education going on. Yeah. Um, and then obviously, you know, getting to work with this marketing agency. And this wasn't just like, you know, a little like marketing firm. It was like literally like something out of Mad Men, like huge marketing firm. Like I don't even want to know how much money they were probably paying them per year, probably hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, so I got a lot of like hands-on experience with them, which I think is invaluable, right? Like you can think about shit all day, but it's very different than getting in there and actually doing things. Um, but in terms of like growing up, so no, neither one of my parents are entrepreneurial. However, (laughs) I kind of always have been. Um, and it's funny because when I think back, I've had like many businesses air quotes throughout my entire life you know like around Christmas I would always like I'm, I'm a creative right so we're always like you know doing shit creating things so yep. around Christmas I would always like make like different ornaments and so I'd you know go around and like sell them to our neighbors or you know my mom's friends would see them and be like oh my god that's so cute can I buy one from you you know or at one point I was like making jewelry like I would make like earrings and bracelets and whatever and so same kind of deal people would just buy it from me when I was in like literally like middle school I would I would do these like okay this is gonna like really show like nerd alert but I would do these like fairy drawings and yeah like buy those for me so I've just like it's been something that I've always done yeah um it's just naturally like I don't know coming up with ideas and like monetizing them I guess which is I'm not saying like don't monetize all of your hobbies people that's also not healthy but um right yeah, definitely. I think it's kind of like in my DNA to be entrepreneurial, which is another one of those things like, you know, oh, I did marketing and didn't even realize I was doing marketing until, you know, it's kind of the same thing with me for entrepreneurship. Like when I finally started my own business and made this decision, whatever, I, I was talking to my mom and she's like, I mean, yeah, like I, I, it makes perfect sense. Like you don't like to be told what to do. You're never going to be able to work for somebody else. Of course you have to work for yourself. And I was just like, yeah. Yeah. That, that tracks. You're like, <laughs> I just figured, I just kind of figured that out. Right. So, it's like, why didn't I notice this sooner? <laughs> it's so funny. Everything you're saying though, because, um, there's this app I'm like, I love apps and I love astrology and like psychology and all that. And like my app today, my daily, 
like every day I get like one little sentence of something, you know, just like inspiration from this app. And it says, literally, literally, it says, sometimes you're doing the work without being aware of it. Like, I'm not lying. Like, that's yes. what it says to me, right? <laughs> so for you, it's like you were already marketing, but I don't know, when I started my first business, like digital marketing didn't exist. Social media did not exist. <laughs> you know, this, these things did not exist. And so it sounds like to me, though, you really did get some great, like, front row seats, hands on experience by like seeing, you know, the marketing and the digital side of things. But something that struck me then I was like looking through your website and stuff, you know, you're both of us, we are very much into strategy and like how to strategically get a result. Right. And I don't know about you, but I know that like, if we don't have a strategy and we don't have a plan now it's flexible and it, might change. It probably will change a few times, but to get a result, there has to be a deadline and there has to be a strategy. And that seems to be the piece that most people are missing. Um, at least in the companies that we go in and work with, it's like, they're missing the right kind of people and they're missing the strategic portion. They know they need to get somewhere and they know they need to provide something to clients, but they don't actually sit down and, and talk through the strategy portion, which is the most important shit. <laughs> Right. The how, how to get there, how to get yeah. the result. <laughs> kind of it's that. like, oh my gosh. And so around this, and, and in this point in time, especially, you know, post the pandemic and all that back in the day of 2020, depending on when you're watching or listening, but there is a huge focus on building the life you want and building the life you want to live, especially for entrepreneurs. And I do want to go back and just say like, because I'm a psychologist, there's four personalities that we talk about, like, in our and whenever we're doing marketing, it's a, it's a psychology methodology, super elementary. Um, but there's four colors. And so oranges, we are very entrepreneurial and we cannot be doing the same thing all the time. So it's like, we've got to keep our wheels spinning or we're not feeding, uh, our, and I don't mean like food, but just like, we're not feeding that creative drive. And it's, it's almost like, uh, unhappiness or like a depression mode that I've felt before where I'm like, Oh, I gotta do something. I gotta like put some paper up on paper something. Um, cause I, I mean, I don't do a ton of design and, and, and creative stuff anymore. I mean, I do more strategy, but you're right. Like you have to have it. And so, but what I've noticed in creatives, especially in younger businesses, and I don't mean young by age, just younger businesses. If you're a creative, you don't know how to monetize. You don't know strategy again, unless someone teaches you that. And so you're big on like creating the, the life that you want to live and have a strategy around structuring your business, which took me almost 15 years as an entrepreneur and owning multiple businesses to really understand because no one ever asked me, well, what do you want? Why are you doing all of this shit? And a mentor asked me, and I'm like, Oh fuck, I don't know. Like, I guess I should think about it. And you know, we all know we need money. We all know we need money to live and to work and to run a business, but money is not what drives a creative's heart and passion. It's just not. And so how have you like married those two? It sounds like you were doing it since you were young, you know, marketing and monetizing it, but as a creative and with ADHD, which were so similar in that the only way I know how to operate is to time block and track time. And we do trade time for money a lot, but again, something that's really important to you and reading through your stuff is like the value and the experience that you create for somebody is priceless. It really is. So it's not really about like that money. You can't buy your time back. So how are you spending your time? And do you love doing the shit you're loving doing? So how did you arrive at that? Like how going into your business, you stepped out of corporate America and did you start from the get go? Like, okay, and I'm making this up, but I'm going to work with five clients and they're going to be on a retainer and I'm going to make this much money. And I want to work four days a week, six hours a day. Like, did you have all that figured out before you like <laughs> jumped in? <laughs> uh, so I will say, uh, I mean, as you mentioned, I am very strategic. So I am definitely a long-term thinker for sure. 
but I will say in the very beginning, um, there definitely was a period of trying a bunch of different things, figuring out what I liked, right? Because I, I am multi-passionate. I do a lot of things. And like I said before, you know, I originally set out to to do this doing music, right? But then in doing that, I very quickly realized, uh, no, if I have to teach flute lessons all day, every day, I'm gonna like, I can't handle this. Um, and then, you know, with the social media management and marketing, I love the strategy portion, but the actual like getting in there and doing it and managing the accounts, I'm like, oh, I can't do this long term either. This is not it for me, you know? So there was some trial and error in the beginning to kind of figure out what areas I really am good at and also light me up to know, okay, long-term, this is where I want to be spending my time. And these other things like social media management, you know, I still, that is still incorporated into my business. That's what I am known for, like social media marketing strategy. But now I have an agency where, you know, they kind of do the work, right? So in, in terms of building my business structure this way, I think there's a couple different facets here. As I was getting in there, doing things, figuring it out, which I do want to put like big asterisk here, you have to do things in order to figure them out. You can't just like sit around and think about it. No, oh, well, I don't really exactly know if I want to do this or that or that. Like, do it and figure it out while you're doing it. Um, so yeah. anyway, that's, that's what I did. But mm -hmm. I think in terms of, you know, once I kind of got a better bearing on things and what I liked, what I didn't like, um, I personally used and also recommend doing this for my clients, uh, basically creating kind of a short-term plan mm -hmm. and then my long-term plan, right? So yeah. short-term, like how am I driving income in the right now? It might not be how, what I want to do forever, right? So in the beginning for me, that was balancing, teaching flute lessons, playing with some orchestras. And I had a few social media management clients on retainer. So in order to leave a nine to five job, I had kind of calculated for myself, okay, if I can get this many flute students, this is going to be this much income per month. If I have this many social media clients, that's going to be this much income per month. Great. So then I can leave my job, right? You need that. So that way you can pay your freaking bills, right? But then right. when you have that and you have some sort of, okay, my short-term plan is in place. I'm generating this income. Okay, cool. Now, like, what's your long-term plan? You kind of need to be thinking about those things simultaneously. And for me, I'm really big on building your business structure and setting your business up in a way that's going to support the actual life you want to live. Because as much as I love what I do, I also sometimes want to go lay on a fucking beach and drink a pina colada, you know, or yeah. like chill in New Orleans for a couple of weeks and just like hang out in the French quarter and what, you know, like life is for living. Okay. Like we, it's yes. Love what you do. Be passionate about it, but also like life is for living. So anyway, um, I have always known that I want to have a more flexible schedule I have always said if I could spend two weeks of out of out of every month traveling or being somewhere else, that would be like my dream life, right? And so there aren't many business structures that are going to give you that kind of flexibility. Um, definitely not going to get that with a nine to five job. So it was kind of thinking about, okay, this is what I want my life to look like. I really want to have the flexibility to be able to work from wherever. I want to have the flexibility in my schedule that I'm not going to have back-to-back -back shit all day, keeping me tied to my computer, or tied to my schedule, right? So for me, I kind of, you know, you can brainstorm all the different ideas and what feels good to you. But what I ended up landing on is, okay, I want to have my agency where, you know, I have my team, they primarily do the work, I do the bookings, I kind of review everything, you know, do the final checkoffs, do the delegation, whatever, but I'm not actually like doing the things, right? I'm not the one designing the brands or designing the websites or doing the social media management, you know, I'm kind of the like, the overseer position. Um, and then I also have digital courses, because that's, as long as you structure them in a way that is scalable, which is another rabbit hole to go down, but yep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> as long as you structure them in a way that is scalable, having digital courses is going to allow you to help significantly more people than you could ever help one-on-one. -on -one, and there literally isn't an income cap, right? Like my programs are set up in a way that I could have 
hundreds of people inside of my program, then they're still going to get supported. They're still going to get results, right? And it's not adding on more to my schedule. So literally, if I was to look at my schedule for the courses that I run, uh, that's what with our group coaching calls, maybe three hours per month. Plus I add on, you know, my coaching clients, which I don't take many one-on-one coaching clients at a time. It's usually six. We do two calls per month. So, you know, six hours twice a month. And then plus me doing the final overseeing for my agency. Like that's not many hours that I have to work every month. Right. And so that's the business structure that I have now. Obviously, it it did not happen overnight. I had to work very strategically to build that and to get here. But knowing from the beginning, beginning beginning-ish, right? Not from the very beginning, but beginning-ish, knowing that, you know, this is the kind of life I wanted. Okay, great. Here's the type of things that I need to do in my business in order to be able to support that kind of life. And then, you know, you basically reverse engineer. Great. Well, what are the steps I need to take in order to get there? You know, and then you just do them. (laughs) which is a fucking strategy, people. There's 24 hours in a day, 364 days a year. It doesn't matter where you live in the world. We all share at the same time frame. And what do you want to do with that time? And what do you want to do with those hours? And like you very specifically said six people, this many calls, this many, which is exactly how my brain operates. It hasn't always been that way. It was chaotic for about 10 years. And I just kept saying yes to everything. And finally joined this group, got a mentor, pretty much saved my life how do you do it? Like with you and your team, like, do you guys use planners? Do you use apps? Do you use uh, platforms or CRMs? Like what do you guys do to make sure that you're using the time the best way that it can be used? Ooh, yeah. So many things. Um, so for me, I'm, (laughs) well, for me personally, for my brain, I use multiple things. Actually, I use Google Cal. I use my, my my phone calendar. I have a written planner. Um, but in terms of actually breaking the tasks down, I like to break them into daily, weekly, monthly for basically all, I guess, like channels that I use to run my business, all like platforms, if you will. Right. So uh, I'm a big Instagram person, right? Um, so that's on on my overall list. And then I break that down into, okay, what are my daily, weekly, monthly tasks that I need to do to keep this running? And then, okay, for my agency, we have a referral program. Okay, what are the daily, weekly, monthly tasks that need to keep that running, right? Uh, email list, what are the daily, weekly, monthly tasks I need to keep that running? And then from there, we go into, okay, is this something that I can automate? Great, let's do that. Uh, next step is, is this something that I can or need to want to outsource? Okay, great. If so, who am I delegating that to, right? And let's get that on on their schedule. Um, and then what's left over, for me personally, where I have all of that is I actually use an Asana board. Um <clears throat> And I just literally set them all as recurring tasks. And so then it's literally like I have a calendar in Asana of all of the tasks that I personally need to do in order to keep my business running. I can go in there and click the little check marks. And once I go down my list, uh, I'm done for the day, you know, and that is it's a very organized way of keeping track of like, this is the stuff I actually need to do to keep my business running. Um, and know I'm doing things that are going to move the needle because I find a lot of times, especially, I mean, for me with my freaking ADHD brain, it's so easy to go down random rabbit holes, right? Like talking with Canva templates or, you know, Oh, let me spend 30 minutes in Planoly looking at my Instagram grid and making it look aesthetic, right? Like there's so many things that we can waste our time on. And we think it's important. Like it might be fun in the moment, whatever, but it's like, okay, yeah, well, I mean, that's not actually keeping my business running, you know? Um, So I find that in terms of prioritization, that's the most important for me is I have to have that like literally like checklist of here's the thing that I actually need to do, the non-negotiables 
to keep my business running, to keep it moving forward, right? Then um, kind of tier two below that would be, okay, what are my today tasks, right? So what are the calls that I have on my schedule today with my clients? Okay, great. Now I need to check Boxer and make sure I'm serving my clients, right? You know, so it's kind of those like today things. Uh, and then everything else is kind of the cherry on top. But, you know, it's like literally if you just get through those two things, your like tasks to keep your business running and your today tasks of what is actually on your calendar, like show up and, you know, serve your clients. I mean, you're, you're going to be pretty good. <laughs> so one really important thing that I want to point out that you said to anyone listening or watching, and it took me a long time, oh, well over 10 years to really understand this, that you focus on what moves things forward and you are not actually doing the work. And that is the biggest time suck is when you are selling something and you are actually having to do it. And 90% of the time, what I have found is the reason the business owner is doing it is because they don't trust anybody else, or they've tried to bring on a team member or a freelancer or outsource it. And it just didn't go well. And they're like, it's just easier if I do it myself. Um, I mean, even last night I was uh, training with a a VA in the Philippines and our intern was on the call and he's like, why don't you just edit the rest of this yourself? Like, why are you telling her like these itty bitty little things to cut? And I said, because if I stop and do it myself, then she, she's never going to learn. And so all the other videos that she edits for social media, she's going to know moving forward that those little bitty one to two seconds and those jump cuts make the watch time complete where if, if you don't pay attention to those details, you lose people within two to three seconds. And then you're not monetizing your videos if you monetize your social media. So, but then there's other times where if I'm working on like a personal project and my team will get so far and then I'll look at it and I'm like, something's missing. I don't know. Like, I don't know what it is. I can't tell them how to fix it. And then I'll be in the shower and I'm like, oh, that's what I need to do. And I will do it myself because it's a personal thing to me. It's personal, but that doesn't happen very often. So it's like, how, like, has there been, is there one piece of advice that you could tell us that, how did you get into that mindset of trusting others to actually do the work? Right. It, it really comes down to leadership and training, right? Uh, yeah. How, like, what's your experience been with that? Yeah, and that's a, <laughs> I'm definitely, well, was definitely also one of those people, like, I'm very type A, I am very much a perfectionist, I was very much in the position of, oh, it's just going to be easier if I do it myself, you know, having a lot of, like, um, you know, personal struggles with hand, or handing things off, because it, it does require a lot of trust, it does, um, but Things that have helped me exactly like you said, you know, making sure that you're doing a really thorough job and training your people and even the little teeny tiny nitpicky details, like tell them because at the end of the day, like, first of all, they're going to be appreciative that you're, you know, trusting them to put, invest that time and energy into that, to train them in doing that. But it's also going to make your life so much easier moving forward. It's thinking about the long-term payoff right now. Like there have literally been times, I swear, sometimes my team probably hates me, but I'll like get an idea for something and be like, okay, we're doing this launch next month. And here's, you know, like delegate 500 different things. But like, you, if you know that you have done your job in training them thoroughly on the way that you think and your brain processes things, which I, I think is one of the, at least for me, one of the most important things that I try to teach them is like, this is how my brain processes information and how I got to this conclusion. So that way, ideally, they're as self-sufficient as possible, right? Like, if if something goes wrong, I want them to be able to come to me with solutions instead of, oh, here's the problem. Now, what do I do, right? Because I'm not just putting more shit on my plate, right? And I'm like, the point is to get shit off of my plate. Exactly. Um, so really, yeah, like really training them. Um, but I think it's it's also... Uh, as you said, leadership and having good relationships and good communication with them too. Like one of the things that I always ask my team, first of all, is how do you best receive communication and feedback? Because I'm a very direct person, but 
not everybody appreciates that, right? Like to me, if you're trying to give me feedback on something, just fucking tell me so I can move on right. with my life and correct it, right? But um, you know, there's I I think I'm kind of an outlier in that sense. A, a lot of people, you know, if they're just like, oh, well, this was wrong, fix it next time. You know, they they might be like, oh, that's that's not the greatest. So you know, knowing how they best like to receive feedback and being able to you know sandwich things because that's how they're going to be able to best receive it. And I of course want to make sure that they're feeling appreciated and valued and that you know I truly like am grateful for them, right? So knowing how to best communicate with them is really important, I think. Um, but also communicating your needs effectively with them too. So one of the things that I make very clear to my team is some of the little subtleties on how I work. Like they they all know I have ADHD. If it is not on my to-do list, it's not gonna happen, right? So whenever something, you know, it's like, oh, can you review blah, blah, blah. Don't just like Slack message it to me because I'm probably, you know, I might read it and then I'm gonna click into something else and I'm gonna forget, right? Like you have to add it to my Asana to-do list or it's not gonna happen and assign a due date or it's not gonna happen or put it in my Google calendar or it's not gonna happen. Um, but also just communicating like, hey, when we're on a call, you know, record it if you need to, write things out, like whatever you need to do. But once something comes out of my mouth, I have to be able to trust that like you are now taking ownership of that task. You are writing it down. You're completing it. If I don't give you a date on like, oh, get this to me by this date, like, please ask me for that. You know, so I think it's just kind of a being honest on for with both parties, right? Like for your your team on like how how do they best receive feedback and not saying, oh, I can handle directness if like it's uh, you actually maybe can't like just be honest exactly. about that um but also being honest like our ourselves too and saying this is how I function and like if it's not on my calendar I'm gonna forget or like if I you know say something I need you to take ownership of it and actually do it and like send me reminders and da 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 because I'm gonna fucking forget everything you know like I'm very honest about that we all know like my whole team knows that so um you know I think it's it's like a the mutual, mutual respect and trust from, from both sides. But how did you learn that? Like, did you, do you guys go through like psychology things? Because, okay. When Amanda edits this, she's going to be like, I feel like I'm talking to Angela. Like we are so on the same page, but it's like, I, I went to school to be psychologist. So it's like, that's how I, a lot of what you just said, it's like, I knew that. Um, but I didn't know how valuable it was until I actually started running my own businesses Right. and in healthcare. I mean, I cared, but like it wasn't my money. It wasn't my bank account. <laughs> I didn't, you know, those weren't my people. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I did the best I could. Right. But it's a little different when it's your own bank account right. and it's a little bit different. I mean, you get it right. But it's like, how did you know to it is, it is the most important thing, your people and your, in the communication, if you don't have that, forget it, like go work at Apple or Chick-fil-A or something like, I mean, I'm being funny, but it's like, you have to have a process. So what do you guys use something to like better help communicate with each other internally? Yeah. Um, so, okay. Well, how did I learn this? I mean, to be really honest with you, I learned a lot of this from, from being in the corporate world and seeing sure, me too. that I don't want to do because yeah. one of the things that has been the most mind blowing to me, like we're about to get really real right now is like seeing the inside of other businesses and working within them and seeing how fucking successful people can be without knowing anything about fucking business or like right. leadership. they have like zero leadership skills, zero communication skills. And that was one of the things, honestly, it would, oh my God, get me so jazzed up. But like, why are you in a management position? You have no communication skills. You have no interpersonal skills. You have no emotional um, intelligence. Like you're not qualified to be in the, like, what the fuck are you even doing? It would <laughs> drive me so insane. And so I learned like a lot of the things that I do now it's because I had shitty experiences in the past and I worked with people who didn't know what the fuck they were doing. I'm like, well, uh, this is how I would do this differently. So I mean, just <laughs> to, to be really real, that's how I learned all of this from that. Um, <laughs> but I love that. I love that. And there, I mean, thank you for being real and thank you for saying it, but it kind of like brings it perfectly, perfectly to like what I'm thinking in my head so if there's a bad situation or there's a hard situation or a stressful situation in your own business or someone you're working with, like take a step back 
because you could learn so much from those situations. And most importantly, learn what you never want to fucking do again. Right. And so there, and, and it sounds like you and I, we've had a lot of these moments. Yeah. I've had a lot and I still continue to get them sometimes daily lessons and, and it's good. But then when I'm teaching people and onboarding and, and teaching interns, like leading people and speaking and, um, I'm like, oh no, no, we don't do it that way. And here's why. And like, I don't do this because of this and like, like stupid shit. Right. It's like the other day I was packing my car and, um, one of the girls that was with me, she's like, do you really have to like zip? She's like, oh my God, I'm OCD too. I have to zip every single zip, like all my bags up. And I'm like, oh, I am a tad bit OCD on a few things. I said, I don't zip my zippers because I'm OCD. I zip my zippers because I almost died in a car wreck when I was in high school. And I was coming back from a trip and all my bags were open because I'm, I'm just, uh, I didn't care that my shit was closed. And when the car, you know, crashed and went down and it, I lost everything, everything. I mean, it's material things, but still at the time in high school, it's like, you know, your life is in these bags. And so I'm, I'm psycho about all my zippers being shut <laughs> and every event that we do and every single thing that we do, but it's like, those are the types of bad things. I mean, I was almost killed, but those are the types of things that you walk away and learn like these really small things. So in the future, when yeah. something falls over or spills out, or you have a trailer worth of lots of money and couches going to an event and it rolls over and there go all your couches. Like, what the fuck do you do? You know, it's like, these are real kind of problems that you're living that day, but then tomorrow the event's over, the wedding's done and like they're on with it. And no one ever knew that there were 25 couches because they, they weren't delivered, you know, they didn't make it to the event. So there's just all these things that you think of where like, you know, things could be much worse. At least no one died, but there's usually a personal experience from it. And again, I tell people that because life is hard and running a business is hard. There is nothing easy about it. There's pros and cons to everything you choose to do in life. But the one thing is just learn how to have the mindset that, um, you know, that, that you have really. And as a, as a leader and a business owner, have that mindset to understand like, okay, this really sucks right now, but I'm going to fall flat on my face real fast fast. And then I'm going to get up and, and do it better. And that's exactly what you just said. Like, it's just being real. Yep. Yeah. Yes. To all of that. <laughs> Always it's, a just, lesson. it's being real. So I know if we have other like marketers and digital marketers, they're just going to like cringe when they hear this, but there's, there's a few myths in, in digital marketing. And, um, you know, my favorite is like, can you just run a Facebook ad? We need to sell some tickets or we have a new product. Can you just run a Facebook? Ad? Yeah. It's not that fucking easy people. Like, oh my God, <laughs> like, no, I'm not going to take your money. And no, I don't care how much money you're going to pay because you're being stupid. Uh, no. <laughs> it takes time. It takes strategy. It takes testing it. And yes, you, you can skip all that shit. You're going to, you're going to waste a lot of money, <clears throat> but I learned that the hard way. But what's like the number one myth that you hear probably every single day? Uh, the one, uh, the one on my no, number one on my hit list is uh, if you build it, they will come. I absolutely <laughs> cannot stand that saying. Um, obviously, with what I do with you know digital courses, you know like the online education base, you know, whether it's a group coaching program or a digital download or digital course, or even a physical product, right. Or whatever it is, like, if you build it, they will come. No, that's not how the world works. Um, maybe it did at one point, but not anymore. It's just not. And I, I will say, let me clarify as well, because I've had this conversation with a friend of mine and she always kind of interpreted it as like, just be passionate about what you do, which yes, that's important. But the way that I interpret that phrase is saying like, oh, just, yeah, you have this great idea for a digital course. Cool. Just go build it. And people are going to buy it. Right. Like, no, that's not how it works. Like you have to, other people have to know how great it is too. It doesn't matter how great you think the idea is, how much time and effort and energy and money you put into building it. If you don't, first of all, if you don't have an audience of other people, but if other people don't also think that's a good idea, if other people don't also want and need that, if other people don't know about it, 
you're not going to make any money. It's not, it's literally, it might as well not even exist, you know? So that's one of the biggest things that I, I have turned away many clients because they've come to me after the fact of launching something or whatever. And, oh my God, it was a big flop and da, 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 you know, I didn't make any sales and I invested $10,000 in building this brand new website and da, 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 you know, help me fix this. And, oh, no, you should have come to me before. Like you were putting your efforts in the wrong place. And actually I just, recently um my newest one-on-one -on -one client literally when she booked with me she's in the process of creating a new um like a physical product and she literally like we were on the the intake call and she was like yeah i just realized like I was putting my efforts in the wrong place. I shouldn't be putting it into developing this product. I need to be putting it into my marketing because if I don't have marketing, if people don't know about it, da, 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 then it like, I'm not going to sell any of the product. I was like, oh my God. Yes. Yes. You're in. <laughs> you're good to go. Let's go. You know, that is really like, that is how it actually works. You have to have the marketing in place, the strategy, the audience, you need those things first before you can ever launch something. Otherwise you're launching something to no one and nobody's going to care and you're not going to make any money. And it was a big waste of time. I'm all about efficiency people. Like we're going to launch something and do something like, let's be efficient about it. Make sure it's actually going to sell, you know, that was the hardest thing for me to learn was exactly what you just said. We built a course. We had so many people like, Oh my God, I need to know this. Oh my God. Oh my. But when it comes time to pull out your pocketbook with your credit card, uh, it's a different story. And people buy what they want, not what they need. And there's so many distractions out there. And so I can't even, if you're, if you're listening or watching, you're not in marketing, I cannot, it's probably would be unbelievable to you how many products and courses are launched and marketed before they ever get built. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't build anything until I have paid. Not anymore. Not in people who've never, <laughs> like there's other course creators, like in some of these mastermind groups, I'm in, and which they've never built a course. They've never sold an online course. Like they're getting, they're like, oh my God, I would never do that. I would never like not have it ready and tested. And I'm like, okay, you go ahead and do that. But I'm just going to tell you right now, <clears throat> you know, if this is your first one, I'm like, do you have a beta group? Do you, why do, what do, what's that? What do I need that? You know, like, again, I'm like, we can help you and, you know, coach you along. I wouldn't do it this way. And it sounds like we've gotten to where you are too. It's like, we don't take on people who can't shift their mindset and understanding that like your money doesn't need to be going here. It needs to be going here. Mm -hmm. But what we think and what we know is two different things. And creatives live in the gray. And especially with online courses, it's like very black and white things convert, they do or they don't. People click, they buy or they don't. And figuring out why is really important. So on your website, y'all, you have to go, like everyone should go see your website. When I looked at it last night, it's like marketing that makes an entrance. It's fucking showtime, people. It's like, yes, this is a <laughs> I'm like, I can't wait to talk to her. <laughs> um, but you had, and I love the quizzes and I love the, like the look of it just because, you know, I love astrology and gold and black. And it's like everything just, you know, talks to me, but you have this uh, quiz that people can take online if you'll tell us a little bit about that and then tell everybody where they can go and do it. Yeah. So I have a fun little quiz. It's called what's your badass business persona? Um, because I personally am just obsessed with those like personality type quizzes. Me too. You know, like Enneagram, Myers-Briggs, astrology, blah, blah, blah. Right. So um, we, we actually created uh, each personality type or business persona you get your we created little tarot cards too for them so each one has your own little tarot card and you get your little description and um next step so it's basically you know kind of giving you the too long didn't read version of like uh basically where you're at in business right now your strengths um kind of next steps it gives you obviously I'm a strategy person so it gives you a very tangible like here's an exercise to kind of help you like get to the next level uh but yeah if you are interested in taking that it is you can just go to my website it's nicolerecarta.com and it is right there on the home page with the hot pink CTA button and I love it <laughs> <laughs> I love it Thank you so much for this. This was so much fun. Thank you so much for your time. I'm assuming if people want to connect with you, you would want them to go to Instagram because I heard you say like you love Insta. 
yes, I'm definitely an Instagram gal. Come find me on Instagram. It's just at Nicole Ricardo. Um, my agency is at NR Media with an underscore. But yeah, come hang out on there. Say hi. DM me if you have any questions. I don't buy for chat. I'm very no BS. So uh, if you have any questions, clearly I'm not going to beat around the bush and, you know, we'll just give you an answer. <laughs> I love it. I literally, your latest Instagram post says I sold 13 spots in an upcoming two-day masterclass series that I haven't even promoted yet. Like, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> like you're doing something right. I mean, that's right. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> crushing it. Yes. Awesome. Well, we'll put all of the links and everything in the show notes. And if you're watching or listening, thank you so much for your time and be sure to tune in next week to another episode of business unveiled. Bye everybody. That's it for this week's episode of business unveiled. Now that you have all the tools that you need to conquer the world and GSD get shit done. Would you share this with your friends and fellow business leaders? One thing that would really, really help us and help new listeners is for you to rate the show and leave a comment in Apple Podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you tune in and listen to Business Unveiled. You can check out the show notes at angelaprofit.com slash podcast and link up with us on social media so you can share your biggest insights and I want to know your aha moments. Until next week, remember the profitable shifts and structures you're creating in your business help you be more present in your life. So get out there and GSD.